Is the XP system a red flag for Halo Infinite? Are specific armor types going to be tied to armor cores and will we ever see Firefight come to Halo Infinite? Well, I answer that and a lot more of those questions within this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So every once in a while on my channel here, guys, I like to go to my community page and ask you questions about if you have anything you want to know more about Halo Infinite. You guys certainly replied a lot back. And so in this video, I'm going to be replying to some of your questions that you guys have burning answers needed, covering various topics like customization, new game modes, possibly new factions of enemies, and a whole lot more. So if you want to take part in the next Q&A, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel to catch those posts when they do go live. And if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So our first question comes from Wo Ludo, who asks the question, how do you feel about the challenge XP system that are going to be in Halo Infinite at launch? I think it's a clear red flag. Keep up the great work. I appreciate the compliment there. And yeah, the XP system to me does sound a little concerning. Uh, I did make a video about this whole thing in my channel as well. You guys want to check that out. Video is up on the channel already. So it kind of goes in a little bit more detail about exactly how I feel about everything when it comes to the new XP system. And from what I've seen, the challenges being the only way to earn XP within Halo Infinite. And from what I've read online from various tweets and from blog updates, it seems like to me that this is more of a change rather than anything to improve XP gains or it's worse for XP gains. It sounds like just kind of like just different. Now, I feel like this quote from the blog update that we recently had about the flight outcomes really puts a better perspective of what they expect when it comes to these challenges. And I really want to read this for word for word, guys, so you guys get the full context of everything. Saying, from a player feedback perspective, we've heard they request to earn XP per match outside of challenges as well as have XP boost timers only count down while in a match. One of the items that wasn't fully there in the tech preview was our daily challenge model that provides challenges along the lines of play X number of games that will repeat throughout the day. These challenges are replaced after completion and provide a regular XP drop for your battle pass just for playing matches and having fun during your sessions with Halo Infinite. The weekly challenges are where you will see more specific challenges that you might recognize from other games. For example, get 10 kills with a battle rifle. There is significantly greater depth with the weekly challenges than you saw in the tech preview that we will go into in future updates. And head of design, basically the guy behind the whole idea of the battle pass and the way you progress with that, Jerry Hook, also says that they'll dig more into details here as we pull closer to launch and even reply to a question talking about the play of X amount of games and something like that, if that will kind of increase over time. And Jerry Hook just really kind of reiterates what they talk about within the blog update where the challenges are like play one match, you earn that challenge, you complete, you earn the XP right there, and then you're given another one of play one match again. So I think this is really more just kind of a change to the XP earns rate within Halo Infinite rather than anything that's something that's actually worse or better for the game. It's just something different. And I honestly think the reason why they made this change, it could be a way to stop people from like cheesing the system essentially. If you think back to like Halo Reach or pretty much any other Halo game when it comes to earning XP, there are certainly some exploits out there to where people can take advantage. And now when you're bringing in money into the progression system as well, when it comes to people buying into the battle pass, you don't want people cheesing their way through the battle pass within like the first day. It would kind of feel like you just wasted your money. So this challenge system XP earns could be really just a way for 343 to keep better track of how people progress through the battle pass and earn their XP rather than just letting everyone just do whatever they want. But as Jerry Hook says, as we get more closer to launch, we'll get more information about this. And until we do, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel. Now the next couple of questions kind of tie into each other a little bit, but they definitely are worth talking about separately. Saying the first question from Johnny Foster here asking, do you think helmets will be locked within armor cores? For example, will the Commando Helmet, aka Carter's Helmet from Reach, only be available on the Reach armor core or could it be used on the Mark 7 core as well? And for what it looks like to me, that it seems like it's probably going to be tied to the specific armor cores themselves. Actually, the Halo Infinite 
Xbox page that goes into a little detail about this. We're on the page here, you can kind of see what we're talking about here with the Spartan customization that they showcase right here. So they have here the Mark 7, which previously was the Mark 7 Olympus. They actually removed that Armor Core title to just being the Mark 7, so I don't know if they're trying to hide future Mark 7 cores or something else is going on there. Not totally sure. But you can kind of see how they have the Mark 7 set right here and they have the whole like the newer types of armor sets, right? Click over to the Halo Reach Mark V armor set and it has much more Reach influence or straight from Reach armor sets as well. And you don't really see much in the way of any kind of crossovers happening there either. Where again, like all these Emil type armor sets are only on the Reach armor set. And then here, for example, the Commando helmet that we mentioned within the question here is only shown on the Mark V as well, along with other Halo Reach influenced armor sets, where if you go back to the Mark 7, you only see kind of Mark 7 armor here. So ultimately, I think it kind of comes down to if you want to be kind of more cohesive with the art style, or do you want to have more freedom when it comes to choosing your armor sets? Personally, I actually kind of like the idea of having armor cores being having specific types of armor sets with them as well. Just kind of give them a little bit more style and a little bit more reason why to unlock an armor core rather than just unlocking individual armor pieces. Of course, yeah, it does sound pretty awesome to be able to mix in your Mark 7 with your Mark 5s and stuff like that, which maybe might be coming up with some cool art style differences right there. But I think down the line, it might actually play out better to kind of keep these armor cores separate to themselves with their own types of armor permutations that you could have. But you never know, down the line, 343 could maybe get enough feedback about the armor customization and the, maybe enough players will say like, hey, we want to have unlimited types of combinations with these armor sets, then, you know, maybe they might just do that. But then if you're gonna be having these armor cores, it kind of negates the whole idea of the core system that we have with right now within Halo Infinite, which I kind of like, cause it kind of helps give you more distinguished armor sets within Halo Infinite. And I think this also opens up a lot of opportunities that have multi-generational armor sets within Halo Infinite as well. Like you can have your, maybe your Halo 4 or your Halo 5 armor sets as well. Maybe your CE armor sets on top of that or something like that to kind of become more thematic and add, give more purpose to the core system again we only have like the very minimal examples of just the mark 7 and mark 5 but i'm sure as we progress through our time with halo infinite we'll come to understand why these kind of decisions were made with the armor customization but i think right now as it is i wouldn't want to see any kind of crossovers but you know it could be cool though now keeping on the topic of armor customization we have another question here saying do you think the odst armors that we got in mcc season 6 are in infinite I would love to see that. And you know what? I would love to see that as well. Obviously, more options, the better, obviously, because armor customization is all about making yourself an individual within the world of Halo. So that seems to be a big emphasis within Halo Infinite. Though I don't think we will see these ODST armor sets in yet, at least. As we just talked about previously, right now all we have is the Mark 7 and Mark 5 armor sets for the armor cores, as well as we do have the Yoroi armor set coming in as well as like the fracture armor core that you can earn within the game as well so i do believe you if we're going to have any kind of odst armors we would probably see those as a separate core we brought in later in one of the first like maybe four seasons of halo infinite that would be pretty awesome but i do feel like it would be its own separate core nothing you would mix in with mark 5 or mark 7s or anything like that which having its own core will help give it a new distinguished kind of look rather than having the options to have everything because if you're able to just mix and match whatever kind of armor set you would want the art styles just kind of blend together and you don't really get a sense of armor cores or styles of armor, which I think is actually a really cool idea compared to just having mix and match whatever you would like. Now this next question was actually the highest rated comment within the thread as well, guys. So you know, that I gotta answer this question right here from a friend of the show, L. Elyon asked the question, do you think there should be a firefight mode added sometime into Infinite's multiplayer? Also keep up the great work. And well, El Elyon, I appreciate you guys coming by the channel, repeatedly asking questions, taking part in the conversation and just, you know, adding to the content and, just, and all that great stuff. I just really appreciate it. But will there be a firefight mode added? I don't really know. As I don't really see like a PVP or PVE kind of element coming into like the multiplayer side of things when it comes to Halo Infinite, at least 
maybe not even within the first year or so. I think if you're gonna try to get some PVE kind of content gameplay within Halo Infinite, you're probably gonna be jumping over to the campaign side of things. Now, why would you jump over to the campaign after completing missions? Well, one thing 343 could definitely try to funnel players into the campaign to replay it to maybe get some challenges completed or have some kind of seasonal event that takes place within the campaign as well to kind of take on some baddies within the campaign certainly could be give you a good reason why you want to jump back in and play that with the world of zeta halo being multiple times larger than halo 4 and halo 5's campaigns combined there is a lot of space for you to take advantage of what you can do within the campaign of halo infinite and for charging players 60 dollars just for the campaign i would really like to see 343 try to put more emphasis on replayability of the campaign and having like seasonal events that will make you jump back into the campaign to play and maybe take out x amount of enemies or do some kind of task within the campaign but kind of help like give you like that firefight feel of you and your squad against the ai but also help you progress through the battle pass potentially or earn some kind of challenge within the game to maybe get some kind of cool unlock or something like that so you're still having that pve gameplay element with co-op experience but not necessarily firefight and honestly in my opinion guys like firefight's okay and all but i really only time i ever find myself playing firefight is either when i have you know the last challenges i need to complete within the mcc or the only time i ever played firefight within halo 5 was really just because i just wanted to grind like xp or wanted to grind more rec points or something like that and i wasn't really playing because i wanted to play a firefight i was playing because i wanted to play halo 5 but didn't really want to bother like thinking or doing anything you just kind of wanted to go through the motions if you know what i mean and that's about the only time i really ever play firefight and honestly i feel like the firefight mode is kind of a trend that's kind of ran its course for the most part i mean because firefight was created in response to horde mode in gears of war which was super popular and so halo tried doing that as well but firefight can be fine just really nice casual fight i totally understand people enjoying it don't get me wrong it's definitely a good mode but do I think it's something that's really worth like developing and making within Halo Infinite? Eh, you know, I definitely, if it never came back to Halo Infinite, honestly, I wouldn't be too heartbroken. Though again, it all just kind of depends how much 343 is going to utilize the campaign and try to emphasize replayability through that. And the last question of the day comes from Thelvadam224 asking the question, what enemy faction that hasn't already been confirmed for Halo Infinite yet would you like to see in Halo Infinite at some point? And I'm pretty sure like the instant answer to this one is obviously the Flood. And though I would be completely shocked if the Flood do not return in Halo Infinite for the first season of Halo Infinite. Uh, I just feel like all the signs are pointing towards the Flood returning. It would be a huge reveal. And plus, you know, 343 has stated multiple times that this is kind of like a soft reboot of the franchise. And when you think of that, people are probably most likely thinking, okay, back to the original trilogy. And the original trilogy had the flood in each one of those games and 343 have definitely set themselves up to bring the flood back into the main story of halo i mean zeta halo has a long rich history of the flood on there I mean, we have the palace of pain apparently on zeta halo which is a location where the forerunners ran experiments on ancient humans the ancient humans referred to that place as the palace of pain so other than that, I wouldn't really expect much. Unless you're talking about sub-factions of sub-factions like the Keepers of One Freedom, which is like a religious group that still kind of believes in the Great Journey, but just kind of in a different way. You know, this was actually brought up within the book Shadows of Reach, which I did listen to. It was a solid read through. But I think that might be a little bit more niche if we're talking about those kind of factions. If we're just talking about like enemy factions, I would say the Flood for sure. And I would, wouldn't expect much more than that. I wouldn't expect anything like new to be created because since we're going back to basics, we're basically playing against like another version of the Covenant when you really think about it because it's just like the Banished. Instead of being blue and purple, it's all crimson red colors, but essentially plays out the same as like the Covenant. And since we're having like a soft reboot, many callbacks to Combat Evolved, which 343 has said they're doing a lot of callbacks to Combat Evolved. I think all signs point to the Flood returning within the first season of Halo Infinite, which I'd be all for. And I definitely do not want that being known at all until the game is released. Because imagine if we knew about the Flood when you first played Combat Evolved, that reveal of the Flood would have completely different context. And I definitely do not want the Flood to be revealed at all within Halo Infinite if they do return in the game. 
But if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me recently, check out the videos on the screen. And here I got a place to all my Halo news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.